Tonight, uh, we will have the first hero, yeah, the Superman, George Simon. He will help us uh, changing the taste uh, of learning. Uh, oh, yeah, you can, you can see, you can see the photo. He will help us changing the taste of learning with the intercultural gaming. He will show us uh, how and especially why games work. Uh, who is uh, our hero? Dr. George Simon created and uh, uh, the award-winning diversity intercultural competence games for training or cooking programs and online learning. Yeah, uh, this is she's another hero, Teresa Ambrovček. Uh, she will assist us uh, with the chat box. So this is uh, uh, another heroine issues here about it. Why do games succeed? Well, um, this is Tiagi speaking. Good experiential activities or trainings answer our questions in a real way. Uh, great experiential activities and trainings help us question all the answers we've already had. Uh, I think that is a very important one to think about now. And games allow us to take light things seriously and serious things lightly. Uh, well, that's all sort of poetic. So I'd like to go there. And for me, the core issue here is that games create alternative worlds and the games invite us to experience these worlds. Um, so gaming invites us to experience new worlds. And that is, the idea of also that the new worlds can be a safe place because actually it's only a game. So we're allowed to explore, we're allowed to tell stories, we're allowed to tell lies with permission, <laughs> we meet new people, we try things that fail but there's no penalty involved in it. I mean there might be a penalty in the game but there's no penalty in real life. Actually there's a gain from learning from the fail. Uh, we try things and we succeed at things. And we say, oh my gosh, I never thought I could do that. And um, we take it home with us and take it out of the room and we can be and act differently, thus escaping from some of our traditional and confining frames. Uh, the game changer here has been the virus. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, the big data and uh, challenges of artificial intelligence are doing all kinds of things that can help or can unfortunately be grabbed onto uh, for uses in power. So what we're facing is really some challenges. This is the thing that you get now in China on your iPhone, which tells you that you've got the virus or you don't have the virus, okay? It's red, yellow, or, or green, and it'll have to do with whether you get admitted to a place or um, you uh, go into uh, isolation somewhere. Uh, a lot of people working at home discovered in this kind of crisis that your boss has put software into your computer which she or he can check on you as you're working along. Uh, some of you may have heard of that already. I hope none of you have experienced it. But uh, you know, the virtual reality is, is becoming realer and realer. And I basically what I want to do here is leave you a bit with the challenge of what is our mission as interculturalists as we face a reality that we've never faced before and we're not sure, okay? Um, this is a quotation from Peter Drucker, an old management pro who says, you know, culture each strategy for breakfast, which means you can have a great strategy, but people's desire to re remain in their comfortable cultural uh, cocoon or group may indeed be the, the most difficult thing to deal with in the resistance. So uh, my, my real question is, what is our mission as interculturalists and how can we use the uh, instruments and in gaming that we could create uh, to make sure that we go back to, we don't go back to uh, normal, but that we create a new normal 
which works better. Uh, I was talking to Napoleon in, in Hollywood the other day. Um, I love <laughs> making these <laughs> photographs. And uh, the point being here is this, this what we haven't explored very much as interculturalists, this idea about uh, uh, what the French uh, sociologist Lyotard brought out as, as being uh, meta-narratives, uh, meta uh, the stories that we tell ourselves that actually shape our world and tell us who we are and how we should behave. And the fact is that many of these narratives about economy, about growth, about education, and so on and so forth, have become cultural realities, but they're cultural realities because of the stories we tell each other and continue to tell each other and unconsciously do not realize that this is in our power to accept, create, advance, and change the culture that we're involved in. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's always this challenge of what is the meta narrative and can we reconstruct the socially constructed worlds and uh, I know there's a lot of pain and suffering going on out there, but there could be an upside to this, that we challenge some of these old narratives and come in someplace else. I love this cartoon where the Buddha says, I, I should have made one of those nobody can depict me rules. They always make me fat and put me in Chinese restaurants. And tell me about it. I've been a blonde white dude for 2000 years, Jesus says. So, you know, how can we identify the socially constructed worlds we have and use games, which are so powerful, powerful ways of exploring new worlds. We could create new and different worlds temporarily, which open the door to thinking in another direction. A discussion I was going to have when we're out of time on this was, what will culture be like after Corona? Well, my culture changes after two or three Coronas, but, <laughs> um, uh, but this is also what I was talking about, infinite games, keep them going. Uh, what I was going to have you do is start a story and you know, four of you in the room, you would, you would say three words and then the next person would say three words, the next person would say three words and you go on and see where that story went about what culture is going to be like in the future. And of course you can pick any topic you like to do this kind of thing, but this is, this is I call endless saga. It's, uh, it's that kind of a game. So yeah, we're up against the ethics and uh, you know, ethics is not something about just doing good or wrong. It's about living up to your full potential. And that was Aristotle's idea of it. And here was the third right. Oh no, here's a, here's a game for uh, changing culture. Uh, we can address cultural issues. This is a young, this is a game about how to avoid an arranged marriage created by a young woman in India. I happen to have that game. It's kind of fun to play, even though I'm not a, a, a very uh, eligible uh, marriage partner at this point. But it's, it's, the, the dynamics are very, very interesting. It's a simple, simple game. But, you know, you can address specific issues with your games. This is another one I want you to watch. It's a, uh, uh, this guy uh, is a really good comedian, and um, if you take a look at it here, he's, uh, he's an Indian in Australia, so this is an Australian uh, game, but uh, check it out. As I say, you'll get, you'll get these slides afterwards. And this is the one that bothered me most. Uh, the fact that gaming is good doesn't mean that all games are good. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen this before or not, but this is a 1930s game about uh, from the Third Reich about how can you you win the game by grabbing as many Jews and chasing them out of town as you can. Uh, sort of uh, makes you think, huh? Um, and uh, really a challenge about that. So. Uh, unconscious value stream in the same way. We all probably know or seen or have at least played Monopoly. Monopoly started as an anti-capitalism game by a woman 
uh, and she actually marketed the game for a while. Then Heather uh, picked it up and reframed it entirely to teach capitalism to Americans and to the world eventually, because the game got all the way out there. And uh, now there's computer versions of this sort of thing. But the thing that interests me most is there's, there's now a, a feminist version of the game where uh, women are in an advantage to win more money than guys by playing the capitalistic game. So, uh, you know, what can you do with all this? So we need to watch about the, the boundary between simulation and life. Uh, what's useful cheating or lying or unethical manipulation, you know. We need to be upfront about what we're doing and debrief appropriately. Um, and uh, also look at the effects of uh, the rewards and punishments we may create during the game to make sure that these do not uh, target uh, a specific group of people uh, in that sense. So where am I getting to? Well, I guess it's getting about time to end here. And uh, I like this game, I bought this game. Uh, this is just a chess, chess game, as you can see. But you fill up the glasses with vodka, and every time you win a piece, you can drink the vodka. Now what this does is it levels the playing field because if somebody's really good, they're gonna get drunk quicker than you are and you get back at them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a, a vision for, for this sort of thing. Acknowledge what you take from other people. Uh, there's a book called Steal Like an Artist, which means uh, be creative uh, and also acknowledge and collaborate and compare with people what you do. Um, uh, Plato says life must be lived as play. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple other little games here that are good. Take an issue, a cultural issue today, and uh, take the people in your group and say, okay, change your gender, change your ethnicity, or change your age. And here's the question, discuss it from the perspective of your new chosen identity. And of course, you can create more identities than this if you like. Um, uh, another one here, take a playing card and put it on your forehead without looking at it. This has got to be face to face, of course. People will defer to you on the basis of the value of your card ace high, king, queen, so on. And if you're the deuce, they'll treat you like dirt. So that's, the, that's uh, how I play this game. George, what do you think will be life after coronavirus? Uh, if I survive, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, what I'm expecting is that the attempts to get back to normal will possibly succeed if they beat the virus with a vaccine and so on and so forth. But what it's done is it's called into question the normal that we have. I mean, I, I walk out the door and the air smells fresh and clean, okay? Um, and we see all kinds of things that the lockdown has made us observe. So I'm thinking that we use the fresh consciousness to say, okay, what about the old normal is stuff that we really don't want? What are those old meta receipts, those old stories telling us? And what kind of new stories can we create? And of course, you know, gaming can be a part of the creation of new stories. I don't know what to see. I have, I have both, what do you call it, utopias and dystopias. Um, I, I can see that perhaps we don't beat the virus as quick as we can, and we go back into a, a rather bad situation. I can see the possibility uh, that um, it will be an opportunity to take control. Um, I happen to be an American in background, though I lived for the last 25 years in France and in Germany and the Netherlands before I spent half my life out of the US, but you know, it's still where I was born. Uh, I expect Donald Trump may either be sure that he's gonna win the elections, which everybody thinks he is at this point, or he'll call them off because of the virus. And it all depends on how this thing goes forward. But I think those of us who want to see some changes, this interruption has given us the opportunity. Um, years ago, uh, I, I worked with a guy by the name of Fernando Flores, who was uh, a minister of industry in, uh, in Chile, in the Allende regime. And he was came 
evacuated, you know, when the CIA turned over the government. But uh, he pointed out that uh, we really, 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 really have a challenge in front of us to listen to what's going on and to be aware of what's going on uh, in, in this context. So, um, you know, trying to get at each other's listening, at each other's stories will be an extremely important part of this. And the one story that he told that comes to mind is that he used to be into racing boats. And he said the idea of <clears throat> creating a good racing boat is you make it as good as you can and then you take it out and you break it and then you see what broke so you can improve it. And I think what's happened is we've been faced with a break here and the opportunity is to look further into, okay, that didn't work in the past, it's broken. Now, how are we gonna do it in the future or should we do it in the future? Blah, 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 I'm sorry. Thank you, George. Thank you very, very much for sharing your passion for gamification, for sharing diversity, for sharing your wisdom uh, in the uh, in these two hours and especially in the last two minutes. And uh, yes, tomorrow we are looking forward to the session by Grazia Gallini. And with this in mind, we would like to thank all of you for your attention. There are also voices in the chat window that we need really more time, uh, you know, to discuss and to um, discuss also what George has prepared. So, you know, there is definitely need for more, which is fantastic. And uh, the desire to stay in touch. And uh, here you can also see in the chat window the LinkedIn profiles. So we are very, very eager to uh, also stay in touch on social media. So thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Let me say a word of thanks also. I couldn't have done this without Joanna and uh, the assistance of Gradiola and Teresa and all the folks who taught me how to do it. So, and grazie too, okay. So, <laughs> thank you. you. you enjoy thank tomorrow you. the next day. Thank you, I enjoy. That was amazing, thank, thank you so much. Bravo thank to you. all the participants for, you know, joining the breakout rooms. And I yes. discovered features in Zoom, I didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I, want to meet, I want to need to know more about it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why, I mean, we, we wait for you tomorrow because our gamification week continues. Sure, yeah. sure, I'll be there. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, we wait for you all tomorrow. Okay, so then, sure. right, see you tomorrow. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you, George, bye -bye. for your wonderful. Thanks, George. See you bye -bye. all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, George. Thanks bye -bye. a lot. Bye -bye.